This is your Barbados Today Morning News update for Monday, December 6. Tributes have been flowing in for well-known attorney at law and social activist Douglas Trotman. He passed away on Sunday after a brief illness. Scores of friends and colleagues have taken to social media to express their condolences. Prominent attorney at law Gregory Nichols described Trotman as a champion. Meanwhile, President of the Democratic Labour Party Verla de Pisa also declared that Barbadians had lost a true champion. Barbadians are paying more for petroleum products. Gasoline is being sold at $3.99 a litre, diesel $3.40 a litre, while kerosene is being sold at $1.55. These changes represent increases of $0.04, cents, $0.12, cents, and $0.12, cents, respectively. It was a busy Sunday at the Grantley Adams International Airport as the island welcomed three inaugural fights. First to arrive just after noon was the United Airlines 383 from Newark, which saw Barbados-born Captain Ryan Padmore in command. Minister of Tourism and International Transport Senator Lisa Cummins was on location and she welcomed the increased airlift. So I'm confident that the Barbados Tourism team will be continuing to have aggressive marketing in the U.S. market behind the gateways to make sure that we fill these seats. Most of our seats coming in out of our traditional and pre-existing gateways are flying full. As you know, it's very difficult to get a seat to Barbados, especially coming out of the United States. And so we expect that in the, in the course of the coming days and weeks that we will see an aggressive push to fill all of the seats on our new flights coming out of Newark and out of Dallas. Government has dropped the ball, so charged the president of the Democratic Labour Party, Verla de Pisa, at the weekend as the party celebrated the 60th anniversary of first attaining government while presenting its candidates for the upcoming general elections. Listing spiraling debt, the high cost of living, high joblessness and rising crime among prevalent problems, the DLP president declared her team is ready to take up the reins of power. In three and a half years of optics, our people are suffering from eye strain. The prescription, though, is sitting here among you. All the glitz and the glamour and the pageantry no accounting, we don't know how much it costs, and our people are still hungry. Our people still need jobs. Our people are hopeless, and we see that recipe for disaster of high unemployment and high cost of living, and it plays itself out in the destruction of our social fabric. De Pisa accused the government of favoring big businesses while failing to provide adequate support for householders and small enterprises. There must be an economic gaze into the future. And it cannot be the constant propping up of established businesses by giving subsidies. What about direct influence in a household by improving disposable income, by reducing fat, I don't know, on freight? Because after all, what is the value added in freight? You can't help but bring the goods here. And we heard Dr. Clyde Maskell indicate that there was the fiscal space to do it. So for, that was eight, what, August? Four months later, we can only conclude that there is no political will to do it. Three people, one man and two women, are the most recent COVID-19 victims. Two more deaths occurred on Saturday, December 4th. A 57-year-old man and a 74-year-old female passed away at the Harrison's Point Isolation Facility. They were both unvaccinated. Additionally, a 48-year-old woman who was unvaccinated died this morning at the Harrison's Point Isolation Facility. The COVID-19 death toll now stands at 238. The Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory recorded 131 new cases, 
That is 63 males and 68 females of COVID-19. Of the new cases, 29 persons were under the age of 18 and 102 were 18 years and older. The number of persons in isolation facilities was 314 and in home isolation, 2,126. Under the National Vaccination Program for COVID-19, the total number of persons who are fully vaccinated is 138,096, which is 51% of the total population or 60.5% of the eligible population. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable and the eldest she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum and she has many comorbidities and I love my mum and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Regional news now in the Bahamas, dogs are being introduced to sniff out COVID-19 infections in people. One local trainer reveals the dogs have a 97% accuracy rate. Janelle Longley from Eyewitness News tells us more. Right, so this big guy here is Oscar and today he and his trainer showed us how he sniffs out COVID-19 infections in people and with variants popping out all over the globe, this might be a good practice for government to use to increase their detection of COVID-19 infections. Presently, Oscar has been in the program for four weeks now and he is 97% accurate in finding the samples. While the initiative has been used around the world since 2019, Oscar's trainer, Adrian Forbes, partnered with the Florida International University last year March, participating in a training program and releasing studies in May 2020. It has been the same results on humans, um, but it has been a small group that we have tried them on, but we are open to the public. On the international front, the Omicron variant of the coronavirus has spread to about one-third of U.S. states, but health officials maintain that the Delta virgin still accounts for the most COVID-19 infections as cases rise nationwide. More in this report from Reuters TV. Well, the winter plan that the president announced actually had a number uh, of strong measures. But U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murthy sought to reassure the public that the Biden administration was prepared to confront the newest mutation of a global disease. The president announced were much stronger measures to expand our booster uh, campaign. We're going to have millions of reminders sent out to seniors, many more appointments set up by pharmacies and hundreds of family mm -hmm. clinics so kids and adults can get vaccinated together. There was also an expansion of testing, 50 million free tests that will be sent out private insurance coverage for tests starting in January. And speaking on CNN, top U.S. infectious diseases expert Dr. Anthony Fauci reassured that when it comes to Omicron, quote, thus far, it does not look like there's a great degree of severity to it. But he added that it was too early to draw definitive conclusions and that more study is needed. It's too early to say that. Former FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb agreed it was too early to say how dangerous Omicron may be in part because most of the data out of South Africa is from Omicron cases in people who already survived the Delta variant. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.